course, and Wenger has always said that there are just too many London derbies for the good of his team. Alan Kirbisley can't get enough of them. Charlton have gone a dozen Premiership games without losing to their capital neighbours, but successive defeats to Bolton and Liverpool have forced changes today. Captain Mark Kinsella starts a club game for the first time since November. He's joined in midfield by John Robinson, whilst Jonathan Johansson, last season's main goal-getter, is back up front. Johansson will be faced by Martin Keown, recalled today after two months on the casualty list because Tony Adams is rested. Gilles Grimondi and Lee Dixon are the other fresh legs. It's only Dixon's eighth Premiership appearance of the season. You need ten for a Championship medal. Well, you need to win the Championship first. Arsenal have been contenders all season long, but have never spent more than three days on top of the Premiership table before being toppled. If they win this afternoon, nobody can topple them other than themselves. Newsy got the game won by now. Two in the first four minutes against Sunderland on Saturday, two in the first eight minutes against Newcastle the previous weekend. Away by Keown, George Costa. Keown once more, quickly involved once more. Youngberg overrunning the ball, Mark Kinsella. No flag here. Johansson has got him behind them, and you should have scored! Well, there won't be a better chance in the match. Chase Newell had the Arsenal goal at his mercy, and he barely connected him at all. Rewinding the two challenges from Robinson and Powell, and finally Bergkamp. Good one-handed save by Dean Kiley. It was a precise finish by Dennis Bergkamp. He knew exactly the square of rigging that he wanted to find in the corner of Dean Carley's goal. But the Charlton keeper was smartly down. Alton Kinsella. Buell is on his way. Keo down as far as Johansson. Didn't get hold of the body on his left side. The error caught in possession. There is an offside flag now. It's a dangerous play by Patrick Vieira, only three or four paces outside of his own penalty area. Firm challenge, no doubt that Ewell was offside as he was involved in that exchange of passes. Cole looking to release Freddie Youngberg and Dean Carley is committed and collides with his own defender, the goal's unguarded, Youngberg Wide on the target, Kylie is still flat out on the far side. Well, it was a photo finish as to who was going to reach the ball first. And the first two past the post were Charlton men, and they bumped into each other. That's why Youngberg had the chance. Rufus and Kylie in a head-on. Youngberg had to react quickly. There were three red shirts back there. But Youngberg, in a sense, just eased Rufus on to Kylie. I think there was any real intent on his part. Certainly intent about his attempt to score. Firm challenge by Stewart. A little too firm for the referee's liking. Burkamp. Slipped into Wiltor. Got his shot away and Kylie needs to have his post covered were against Wiltor. That was a powerful hit. Jason Newell. The soldier Robinson short. Lee Dixon. One back by Ewell. Making the first of his uh, notes for half-time reference. Dixon, some help from Vieira. Only ever one winner there. Vieira's been caught in possession, not for the first time, this time by Yule. Kitzler tried to free Stewart. Instead, it's Henri, who's free at the other end. Thierry Henri! 
just as Charlton Athletic were thinking they might score, Arsenal have. You can see what it meant to Thierry Henry. But in dedication to his injured teammate Robert Perez, Thierry Henry gives Arsenal the lead. Once he started to stretch his legs, he was never likely to be caught. There was a dress rehearsal for that at the weekend when he had a goal disallowed from offside. Fabulous speed, cool finish. We've seen it time and time again, 29 times now for Arsenal this season. His fifth goal in three matches against Charlton Athletic. What have you got against them? Charlton have just had the wind taken out of their sails somewhat here. They'd started brightly, Arsenal anything but. Scoreline tells a different story and interesting to see how the two teams react to that goal now. Dixon to Henri. It's turned Rufus. He's found Burkamp. He's round Kylie. And Youngberg runs into second. Clinically done by Arsenal. Henri, Burkamp, Youngberg, 2 0. Charlton must be scratching their heads. They've had every bit as much of this game as Arsenal so far. But the quality in the move is the inherent threat that's there from Arsenal and has been from the very start of the season. They can score goals at any time. And they've scored two here inside five minutes and taken control of the game. Given away by Robinson. Burkamp slips it into the path of Youngberg, who slips it into the path of Wiltor, who slips it into the path of Aubrey. 3-0. Fabulous, fabulous Arsenal counter. I think they've scored from every attack so far. Charles Athletic have had absolutely no answer to the quality and pace and confidence with which Arsenal have attacked them on the break. Thierry Henry goes to 30 goals for the season. The first Arsenal striker to do that since Ian Wright in Arsene Wenger's first season in charge five years ago. Johansson running through Lugdi. Stewart. Bumped off the ball by Grimondi, who loses out to Ewell. This is Parker. Now Johansson. Stewart might come for Robinson. Just teased him a little bit, couldn't quite catch up with it. Through the legs of Dixon. Kinsler! Corner kick. Charlton start the second half as they started the first. Campbell in front of Rufus. Into the danger area by Parker, out of the danger area by Youngberg, lost by Henri. Rather sloppy start to the second period from Arsenal. Powell. Keown up in front of you. Nothing sloppy about his work. Kinsler had the best chance in that. Not of pressure. Not sure that his effort was on target before he caught the back of the charging Arsenal defender. Arsenal getting their measure and control back now. Dixon to Campbell. Lugny. Vieira. Somebody's been counting these passes. Henri. Skips away from Young. Accelerates away from Robinson. Go past George Costa. Still Thierry Henri. Now Sylvain Wiltor. Locked on the line by Richard Rufus. Arsenal still have a problem with Henri, the legacy of this marvellous run. He crashed into the advertising hoardings after the cutback towards Wiltor. The pass after Arsenal pass preceded that chance. Does everybody move back from the TV sets? Here he comes. He's back 
his head painfully. Jeffers and Canu are on the Arsenal bench, but Henri will soldier on. Luzny, Vieira, Youngberg. Henri. Oh, it's beautifully done. Whipped inside Young for Youngberg. Bergkamp against George Costa, free kick Charlton. What about that skill from Thierry Henry? Rolling the ball under his boot, first one way, then the other. Now you see it, and there you don't. And another look, now gone again. Perfect pass too. flag here, Mueller has got clear of Arsenal, oh, a terrific save by David Seaman. Well, he's probably the only Arsenal player who hasn't made a memorable contribution. But truly stretched there by Jason Ewell, who just got in behind Arsenal and the tips of the fingers of David Seaman strong enough just to help the ball on its way over the crossbar, wonderful stop. Kinsler will take the corner, and Seaman completes a very, very good piece of goalkeeping. It's the time of the year when we get the calculators out. Goal difference, Manchester United plus 38, Arsenal plus 31, Liverpool plus 29 at the start of this match. Henri, catches if you can. Charlton Athletic, the lords of the London Manor, couldn't get anywhere near Arsenal today, blown away by three devastating attacks in ten first half minutes. Seven Premiership wins in a row now, a magnificent run. It takes Arsenal to the top. The $64,000 question is now theirs to answer for themselves in the remaining weeks of the season. Comfortable winners at the Valley by three goals to nil. Well, I think if uh, Arsenal catch you um, defending those eye up as a centre circle with that pace around and uh, the ball is delivered, then you're in trouble. And uh, we spoke about it. We spoke about defending perhaps a little bit deeper to try and uh, give ourselves a chance against Will Todd and Homry, the pace of them. But we was too high up and uh, the ball dissected us and it was over. It looks like a lot of fun to play in this Arsenal team at the moment. Yeah, it's nice to get in the team. Um, not been in for a few weeks, but uh, yeah, it is. With the, with the uh, forwards we've got, it's, it's exciting. We've just got to make sure we keep them out of one end and then just pass the ball to them and let them get on, get on with it. So an important win for them today. Puts them mm. top, of course, Liverpool and Manchester United out of action because of Europe. And they seem to want to do everything in 30 minutes, don't they? They got mm. it all kind of dead and buried on Saturday in 28 minutes or something, 24 minutes today. Yeah. How does the team stop that? It's very difficult, Gabby. I have to say, Charlton started quite brightly. You know, they, they, they got about the game quite well. But once Arsenal got in front, uh, and as you say, in that devastating spell, they score their goals and then they're, you just, they're just too good. It's as simple as that. And Charlton have only themselves to blame for the goal, I have to say. You've got to concentrate. With guys like Henri, with the pace that he has, you must concentrate at all times. Vieira wins possession here now. I just want you to take your eyes off him and watch Richard Rufus. He's going in to mark Dennis Burkham, which he's entitled to do. You can't give him any room because he'll slot it through for Henri. Luke Young then has to recognise his centre half's gone in to deal with someone else. He's, he's got to cover round a little bit more on Thierry Henry. Give himself a couple of yards. Forget about playing offside so high up the pitch. He doesn't do that. Now, Vieira loses possession. This is the same move from a different angle. Luke Young has drifted away. All of a sudden, Sol Campbell intercepts and Henry is in behind Richard Rufus. The Charlton defender does ever so well. He gives everything he's got trying to get back. But Henri is just unstoppable and it's a glorious finish. All right, he owes the groundsman a few quid for a corner <laughs> flag. But it is an absolutely fabulous goal, I have to say. Now, the second one. 
He doesn't want to give him any room this time, Richard Rufus, so he's going to get as tight as he possibly can. The only problem with that, great players, they, when they can feel you, they know where you are. He rolls him, slots it in behind Costa. Burkamp, great run. And what about that for a pass, Rob? I mean, that's football intelligence for me. And not only he's got great technique, Burkamp, but he, he knows the game. He knows that somebody will be following in there. He's yeah. not sure. I don't even think he's looked. I think he plays this blind, knowing one of his forwards will be yeah. in there. Freddie Lundberg benefits with a tap-in. Seen them do it a lot lately, Arsenal, where they, they seem to get it, in, get it into a wide position and they just roll it across the box and score more goals. And again, the third goal now. Look at Henri. He is technically perhaps half a yard offside in that situation. Don't and you think, Anne, that Charlton, though, are defending too high? Yeah, They're of course. too high. There's too much grass in behind and they cause himself a problem. The difficulty is with these, Rob, is that if you drop off them, Burkamp then comes into play and starts finding people. As you say, you play a high line. If you don't get it spot on, you're trying to trust the linesman to get it right every time. And we have to give a lot of, you know, you've got to respect that it's a very difficult job for linesman to catch someone like him dead right every time. It's so difficult. speed and he's obviously in tremendous form. But two individual performances that impressed you. Good for yeah. England as well, good for Arsenal. Uh, sure. Tell us about those. Sol Campbell, I thought, well, I, th I think has been playing very well for a, for a long time now. I think ever since that Tottenham game, when he came out of that with, uh, with flying colours, I think he's just grown. And bearing in mind there's been no Keown, no Adams, and he's played in there with Stepanovs and Grimondi at times. I just think he's been immense lately, I really do. Again there, that's just a basic header. He just gets plenty of height on it, always buys you a bit of time. And here he puts himself in a good situation and just clears it. I think if his distribution gets better, Sol, it's going to be a... A, you know, he is a great player, but he's going to be a top, top class player. And the goalkeeper has just been fabulous lately. David Sim, what a save this is from Jason Yule. All right, the game was probably already over anyway, but clean sheets give confidence to everybody, and that's a fabulous fingertip save. He really has come back and hit amazing form. Um, yeah. Just briefly, can they stay there, Arsenal? I think they can. Looking at, looking at the way they're playing, Gabby, everything that's coming their way. Today, people thought Charlton away it could be a tricky one for mm. them, just blowing them away. OK. Manchester City all clear with a game in hand. Chelsea's draw at Ipswich and Leeds' defeat at Spurs leaves Newcastle looking more comfortable in that fourth spot. At the other end, Leicester are 13 points from safety. Could go down next Saturday. A bad day too for Derby. A third successive defeat keeps them deep in trouble. Ipswich picked up a point but now haven't won in eight games. Blackburn's win gives them some breathing space. They don't sing 1-0 to the Arsenal anymore. 3-0 is the new Highbury anthem. And get here on... With Martin Keown already out. They may be out of form and missing their most influential player, but Valencia have knocked Arsenal out of the Champions League once before and have the ambition and talent to do so again. Whatever happens, there'll be fireworks in Valencia tonight and there could be explosive news for England. The city's Las Valas festival will light up the night sky and Sven Joran Eriksson will be an interested spectator. Arsenal need just a point, but it's the fitness of key players which will be on the mind of the England coach. David Seaman didn't travel and is unlikely to feature in England's next two qualification games. Sol Campbell is also a concern for club and country. Wenger believes he'll struggle to cope with the number of matches. There's a major doubt about Sol Campbell and uh, Patrick Vieira, who have travelled. And uh, I will have to wait to make a decision. The chances are for both around 50-50 or 40-60 for Saul Campbell and 50-50 for Patrick Vieira to play. It could be an unfamiliar and untested central defensive pairing which starts the game then with Pascal Sigan alongside the Latvian Igor Stefanovs whose last first team start was back in November. The fitness of Patrick Vieira crucial then, his knee injury a major concern, Arsenal desperately need their captain fit. Defeat in the Mustaya two years ago cost Arsenal their place in the Champions League. John Carew will be the man they have to stop, although Valencia's recent form is poor and they're without the influential Kili Gonzalez. They are not at their best at the moment, but the uh, Champions League game is a Champions League game and uh, we don't have any speculation on the form of uh, Valencia. We know what we want to achieve. One thing is certain, there'll be a party in Valencia tonight, but will Arsene Wenger and Sven Joran Eriksson be celebrating? Adam Dark, Sky Sports. Well, in that same group, Ajax will have to try and beat Roma in the Olympic Stadium without some key players. Swedish top scorers Zlatan Ibrahimovic has a hamstring injury and Ajax coach Ronald Koeman will make a late decision on his fitness. Former Liverpool striker Yari Lippmann misses this evening's game due to a leg injury. But captain Christian Shivu will return to the side after being rested for their league game last weekend.
So if Arsenal win, they're in the last day. Valencia are out. A draw will also see the Gunners through regardless of the result in Rome. A defeat for Arsenal means they'll only go through if Roma beat Ajax. Well, Roma, Ajax and Arsenal will then level on seven points. The Gunners will go through due to a better result between the three sides, though. And Arsenal back in Premiership action on the Super Sunday. They play Everton at Highbury. Coverage gets underway at three on Sky Sports 1. Kieran Dyer says he owes Newcastle and their fans a